Welcome once again to Wesley Impact. I'm Keith Garner. Do you know anyone whose life has been affected because of a bad childhood experience? Thank you for joining us today. Do you know anyone who's been bullied? Or perhaps you yourself has been bullied? Quite often when we talk about bullying, we think of the behaviour of children in the school playground. And whilst that's very important, and perhaps the most common form that we talk about, it's not the only form. And increasingly we hear of people from all areas of society, from all age groups experiencing some form of bullying. Today I'll be speaking once again with Brett Murray from Make Bullying History Foundation to look at this important issue and we'll see how this program has been adopted by a major rugby league club in Australia in, the, in our Australian NRL competition. Later in the program we'll be joined by our very own Craig Gower who will sing Lord I Believe and my thoughts will focus on a key passage, perhaps one of the most key passages in Luke's Gospel in Luke 9, 51 through 62. Some important issues there are opened up about discipleship and are raised about the call of Jesus Christ in our lives. I mention that because I'm going to be talking to Brett Murray from Make Bullying History Foundation. I'm soon going to be talking to him. But here at Wesley Mission, all too often we see the effect of bullying upon people, the effects it can have upon the whole of the community. Indeed, many of those we seek to serve have experienced some form of bullying, and the effects even from childhood experiences can hinder a full and productive life. Through our work at Wesley Vision Valley, we run a number of programmes where we work with children who, for whatever reason, don't have the same life-affirming opportunities that are available to their peers at school or in a social or community circle. You may be familiar with Sinead's story. As a young teenager, she was bullied at school and she has had a direct impact on her own self-esteem and therefore the place she placed on her own life, her own value. Today, Sinead is a mature young lady who has dealt with her experiences as a young teenager and is pursuing her goals. But when she came to us, things were a little different. This is Sinead's story. Hello, I'm Carl Stefanovic. Welcome to this special Sunday edition of A Current Affair. And tonight, that video. The moment when a 15-year-old boy said, enough is enough. They were saying that I was dumb, I wasn't smart enough, I didn't want to go to school, I didn't want to get out of bed. My mum found it really hard to try to get me back on track to going to school and everything. But it just got worse. I used to hit people when they said things about me and at one stage I actually ended up getting suspended from school. I just couldn't take it, I snapped. It was just a little bit too much for me. When Sinead arrived, she was quite quiet. She actually came with another person that she knew that had been through the program before. She didn't really talk to many people. She was a bit, um, a bit like depressed sort of like a bit sad. Um, she wasn't sure on how the program was going to go. I was severely nerve-wracked about it. I wasn't in my surroundings, in my element, and I had no idea what was coming to me. And then everyone was just so friendly and nice and kind and caring. Jess, to be honest, I see her more as a sister to me. She will listen to you. She is always there. Vision Valley had really helped me. They helped me open up. They helped me realise what I was doing was wrong and I should be the bigger person. They said it's okay to be you. It's okay to let people know what's going on so then you don't have to have that guilt and worry behind it. So, and then after that I just forgot about everything and everything kind of dulled down after that. Operation Hope um, is there to um, build their self-esteem and confidence. It's early intervention, so they come out here, they're affirmed by the leaders, they have fun, they can go home with those skills, they can go back to school with those skills as well. I've learnt a lot from Vision Valley and 
what I would say to everyone, it's the best experience you can have. When I went through the program, I felt happy, and my mum came back and saw a real difference. Now I look forward to going to school and look forward to seeing the friends who care about me. Sinead is one story, but I get probably about 250 stories of these a year. Um, we have our bullying cases, but we also have domestic violence and um, foster care kids, out of home kids, and these kids are like 14 and they don't have a place to go. The practical and encouraging thing about Operation Hope is that the more resources we receive, the more children we can actually support. We've already got, as you can see, this wonderful facility. It's been here for 40 years. And then you add to that, we've got Wesley Mission's 200 years of experience and presence in this area, and particularly in helping young people and children. And all that comes together on one site. So for $600 per child, we can support them and turn past experiences into a springboard so that they can have an exciting future. I feel that I do have a future to look forward to. I do have that hope that I could be something bigger than I thought I'd be before. Mummy said it was not safe to go home. She said we would have to camp in the car. For $35 this winter, Wesley Mission can give a homeless family food, blankets and clothes. Please donate urgently at wesleymission.org.au donate. When are we going home, Mum? Heart-wrenching story, really. Please do be in touch if you'd like to find out more about our work at Wesley Mission. If you'd like to support our work, or if in any way we can help you. The email address is on the screen now, impacttv at wesleymission.org.au. Now, joining me here in the studio to look, uh, continue looking at this important issue of bullying and talk about what he's doing to address the problem is the founder of Make Bullying History Foundation, Brett Murray. Welcome back, Brett. Thank you, Keith. Thank you uh, we, we previously spoke on this programme, so some viewers will, will remember that. You oversee the work of what, what is now known as Make Bullying History Foundation. What's all that about? OK, well, we're a charity that uh, delivers seminars to students, teachers and parents, and also corporates, uh, between 40 to 50,000 people across Australia and New Zealand every year. Mm. How many people are involved in...? In, in, in the actual organisation? Yeah. Uh, well, we're a pretty small organisation because we want to make sure and maintain the quality of services provided does never uh, find itself being diluted through uh, a massive... Uh, um, overspread yeah, uh, of yeah. different staff. So we've, we've got our, our board and our steering committee and my, myself and my wife head up the program uh, and uh, I'm the main presenter and we're in the process now of growing and uh, training up more presenters. Absolutely. So what are some of the forms of bullying that the Foundation wants to address? Oh, well, there's many different uh, forms of bullying. There's verbal abuse, there's physical abuse, you know, physical uh, attacks, there's ostracisation, rejection, uh, where, where groups of people will make another person feel unwanted and unvalued. There's cyberbullying, the online mm, mm. Uh, world is, is rife with uh, negative behaviour. But I think the, the biggest education we bring to people right across all spectrums, is what actually is bullying and what is not bullying. Yeah. And that's the biggest misnomer out there in society because a lot of people just think, oh, if someone's doing something negative towards them, oh, they're being a bully. Well, no, actually they're not. They might be being vicious, malicious, small-minded, self-centred, violent even, but just because they're behaving in such a negative way doesn't constitute them being classed as a bully. No. So bullying has to be, by definition, long-term and ongoing mm. and often targeted negative behaviour yes. towards a person or a, pe a group of people that ends up in them being disempowered. Now, you, you've been working with... Here's the advert... With the sharkies. Yes, with the sharks, <laughs> yes, yeah. With Cronulla Sharks, yeah. a major national uh, rugby league team. Yeah. Uh, what are you doing there? Well, we are the signature community partner with the Cronulla Sharks for the next three years and we're very, very proud to be associated with them and through the Sharks Make Bullying History Initiative, we plan to get into every school in the Sutherland Shire and also the Chambers of Commerce and places of business and make uh, the Sutherland Shire bully-free. That's, that's the vision and the... Yeah, and is it, are, are you hoping that you get some of these guys uh, almost as ambassadors for the cause, as it were? Oh, absolutely, because the, the core of our message is understanding the, the key role that 
positive male role models have in society, and i.e. fathers. And uh, if we look at a broad uh, brushstroke of society today, we know that fatherlessness is a major problem that's happening across the Western world. And so a lot of kids who don't have those positive male role models in their own home look to their sports stars, and in this case, the rugby league players, and it's right across all sports. And the Christian faith underpins so much of your thinking, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, absolutely. For me, myself, I'm a man of faith, and, and uh, those um, you know, value sets that yes. I've learnt throughout you know, my own journey yep. um, really underpin... But it's something that can be acknowledged across the whole community. Well, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, the, the, the famous teaching of do unto others as you would have others do unto you. I mean, treat people the way you want to be treated. That, yeah. It's not rocket science and you don't have to be a, a Christian to prescribe to that kind of, no. you know, ethos. And sharkies are doing well, aren't they? They are, they I'm are. I'm not going to talk anymore about that. <laughs> so <laughs> why is it well. important to you? Just why is it important to you? Well, it comes from my own experience. I was chronically bullied as a, as a high school student and it never... It was addressed properly at school. Uh, we didn't have the tools at school. We didn't have chaplains like we do now in schools. We didn't have counsellors. It was, you know, just harden up, you know, just take it. The bullying's a part of life. And uh, I never had a positive male role model in my life. My parents were divorced, so I grew up with a single mum and she did a phenomenal job of raising myself and my, my brother. But uh, I decided at a very young age, at the age of 16, after I left school at the age of 15, that I wanted to be for others what I never had, and that was a positive male role model. And out of that desire to want to help people, uh, you know, did life you has go, Did here. you go home at night fearful? Was, was it... Oh, it, well, back then we didn't have social media, so home was an escape, which was great, which yeah. highlights a problem we do have now. Social media means the bullies can come right into their bedrooms, yeah. but that's another topic. But for me, my, my journey was one of dread. I would be physically ill before I went to school, knowing that I was going to be bashed that day, knowing that what, what lay ahead. And it wasn't just name-calling or ostracisation. Like, I was physically attacked nearly every day of my high school life. And yeah, it was just horrible. Um, I mean, you, you talk about what you do. I mean, the truth is, and I don't want to put this to you, a lot of people yeah. that are bullied become mm. bullies, don't they? Oh, absolutely. The research we did in partnership with McCrindle Research stated that 49% of victims of bullying go on to bully themselves because at, at the end of the day, no one wants to be the, at the bottom of the food chain when it comes to the social pecking order. You, you know, even if I'm feeling bad because that one's picking on me, well, if I can somehow get some form of power or control or self-worth by putting that person down, and it's usually through a juvenile mindset that we, you know, people come to these sort of... <laughs> Brett, we wish you the very them. best of success yeah. as this work goes on in the future. And I know we're going to make a link between our two websites so people yeah, will be so able to find out more about the important work that you're doing. And particularly this book that people can see on screen now, yeah. Make Bullying History yeah. and, and, and All That Lies Behind It. We wish you well. I, you. I'd love to come back and touch uh, on one point later in the programme. A slight change of pace now as we welcome our own Craig Gower to sing Lord, I Believe.
I chose to volunteer at Wesley Mission because I'm passionate about justice. I chose to volunteer with Wesley Mission because I've always wanted to work with people who have a disability. You meet friendly people. Uh, they're all people who are self-motivated and energetic. It not only gives me a purpose, it keeps me active and activity leads to longevity. Wesley Mission currently provide over 130 individual services with over 2,000 employees supported by over 3,000 volunteers to assist over 21,000 families and individuals each year. Whew, that's a lot of numbers. So as you can imagine, we are always looking for more volunteers to help. So please, volunteer today. Visit our website, wesleymission.org.au. You will not only be meeting new and interesting people, but you will be doing all the good you can, because every life matters. When you study the Gospel of Luke, a completely new section begins at Luke 9.51. And it runs a whole deal right through to Luke 19. And all the different sections are all designed by the Gospel writer to lead to the cross. It's a Samaritan village where people did not welcome him. And we note the reaction of James and John. They really wanted it sorted out. We read in, in chapter 9 of Luke, verses 54 through to 55. When the disciples James and John saw this, they asked, Lord, do you want us to call fire down from heaven to destroy them? But Jesus turned and rebuked them. Well, what a reaction. Um, but, you know, it wasn't the way of Jesus. We're told that the people's reaction were many and varied because later on we're told that in verse 57, as they were walking along the road, a man said to him, I'll follow you wherever you go. And it goes on and he talks about foxes have dens and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head, Jesus said. He said to another man, follow me. But he replied, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. And Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead but you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. He said to another man, still another, I'll follow you, Lord, but first let me go back and say goodbye to my family. Jesus replied, no one who puts a hand to the plough and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. Well, there are three prospective disciples. One makes the first aware it'll not be easy. The second may appear harsh, but not in a way in which Jesus is saying the family doesn't matter. The last thing that Jesus says throughout the gospel is don't worry about your family, you can forget them. But I think that the, the words that really are coming through powerfully in here is the calling of Jesus takes precedence in our lives. And the third wants permission to say goodbye. It's not unreasonable, is it? But Jesus says there really isn't time for that. And the text of the gospel call to the disciples is something that I think all of us can learn from. 
It's in verse 62. No one who puts his hand to the plough and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. Wow, what a powerful calling for all of us. Whatever we do, we've heard uh, earlier on in the show about the importance of, of some people setting aside their lives to help people who are being bullied. Uh, we know that many people respond to, to, to the call of Jesus in, in, in those formal ways. But I think all of us have some role, some place in our lives that can be given over to him. And it has to really be a priority because we're told that Jesus set his face to Jerusalem. He, he let everything get into the perspective of what the end story was going to be. And we know that the powerful end story is the cross. That's where Jesus is heading. And if we're going to follow him, if we're going to be people who in our day, not only in the, the days of the first disciples, to be modern day disciples, then we have to have that determination and that willingness to count the cost, to give our all to him and to recognize that there will be times in our lives when it may not mean leaving family, but it may be something that, that really cuts deep into us. And we realize it says, this is the priority of your life. And for the disciples, well, what a journey they're on. They're going to feel the cost very much. Um, and we're told, aren't we, in the Gospels that some of them fled into the night, one of them betrays him, one of them denies him. It's going to be a real test of their discipleship. But I suspect these verses are most powerful in the context of the early church, in the context of those who heard these words for the very first time. As this story was told, I can imagine disciples, if they were in congregations or small groups that were meeting, would nod and say, oh, yes, we remember him talking like that. And there would already be those that were having to count the cost in terms of their own lives, in terms of the way that they were living out their lives with persecution in Jerusalem, uh, scattered congregations, knowing the cost. And the cost of Christian discipleship in the realm of bullying, for example, may mean standing up, standing up in a place for what you believe to be right. We need to create communities in which we're free of some of those things and set free to be a community that cares for one another. And that is a real priority. That is part of what it means to live out the good news, to, to do a word and deed ministry where we hear these words of Jesus and put them into practice day by day. It's a costly business if you and I are going to follow Jesus, if we're going to be amongst those people. And Jesus says, if you set your hand to the plough, if you've begun the work, if you got in there to do it, you can't turn back. It's that important because it's a call to the disciples and all of us. If you would like to contact Keith and find out more about today's program, write to us at Wesley Mission, Post Office Box A5555, Sydney South 1235, or you can send an email to impacttv at wesleymission.org.au. On our website, you can catch up on past episodes of Wesley Impact, find out more about our work, read online magazines and articles, and connect with us on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter and YouTube. You can also connect to Keith's blog and stay up to date on all of the latest news and information from Wesley Mission. wesleymission.org.au well, thank you for joining us today. It's always good to hear what young people who have a calling in their life are doing and what that calling might mean and the positive contribution that they're making in their circles of influence. Now, Brett, you, you would be the first to say, I'm sure, that many people who exercise in wonderful ministries and, and leadership roles have been through this experience. And the work that's begun is not just a short-term initiative, it's a long-term initiative. And the results are often not felt until a young person has become an adult who's grown up without the harmful scars of having been bullied. And, and I think that one of the difficult things is you have choices to make. Am I going to be a bully or am I not? Am I going to work with my family? If you could say in just a couple of sentences uh, something to somebody who's being bullied or living with the scars of being bullied, what would it be? Oh, the thing that I would say if anyone's out there and you've been a victim of bullying, number one, what the bully has done to you doesn't reflect on your value. You matter. You, you have intrinsic and amazing self-worth and you're an incredible individual and your past does not define your future. You have a greater future than you have a past. 
I think that's great, really, because what we've talked about here and Brett has been willing to share is that the work that he's doing grows very much out of his own experience. And if you're being bullied and would like to speak with someone about your experiences, please call Lifeline on 13 11 14. There are people there ready to take your call and help in any way they can. 13 11 14. Now, if you want to watch this episode again or catch up on past episodes, visit our website, wesleymission.org.au or contact me directly at Impact TV at Wesley Mission. Thank you today for joining us. We do appreciate the regularity of you sharing with us and joining in our programmes. And I hope you have a great week. The week that lies ahead offers all kinds of hope. And if you're experiencing bullying, don't forget to do something about it. Thank you again for joining us today. God bless you. Wesley Mission answers more than 25,000 calls through Lifeline each year. To find out more, visit wesleymission.org.au.